Good morning. morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us this morning. My name is Joe Monahan, and on behalf of our staff and our congregation, we want to say thank you so much for being with us this morning. Today we're continuing our series for Advent, which is called Keeping Christmas, and we're talking uh, in this series about practices and about attitudes that help us fully engage what God has done for us in Jesus Christ by stepping into our world. And so today we're talking about what it means to keep Christmas real. That's where we're headed this morning, and we thank you that you're with us today. If you're joining us in person, we hope that you'll take a moment that you'll uh, check in on Facebook. If you're online with us, we hope that you'll take a moment and share the stream. It's one of the things that really helps us to be able to connect with new people. And uh, the ushers will come around in just a moment. If you are visiting with us, maybe for the first time, we hope that you'll take a minute and share your contact information. If you're online with us today, we uh, invite you to do the same. You can go to medfordumc.org slash Sunday. There you'll find a place to record your attendance, a place to make a gift, a place to submit a prayer request, uh, all of those kinds of things. Good uh, spot for you to be able to learn a little bit more about the church. And you can do the same thing here if you're in the room with us today by scanning uh, the QR code that's on the back of the pew in front of you. So we encourage you to do that. And um, so as we get started today, I just want to share a couple of announcements. And the first is really uh, just a huge thank you to everybody who uh, took part in yesterday's Dickens Festival. Whether you were a part of the cast, uh, we are really grateful for the band Grateful for everybody who baked the cookies, everybody who served, everybody who uh, helped to make the hot chocolate and heat up the cider, all of those kinds of things, set up and tear down and wrangling animals, all those things. We are just incredibly grateful for this opportunity that we have year by year to participate in this um, because we reach a lot of people and are able to share with them uh, the story of what God has done for us. And so really, really thankful. I want to lift up the angel tree. Uh, we continue to uh, have angel tree gifts available and if you'd like to uh, make a donation, you can just stop by uh, outside uh, the worship space this morning as you're on your way out. We hope that you'll take a minute and do that, connect, and um, pick up one of those angel tree uh, gifts. And then the third thing, well, there's really two more things I want to lift up. First thing is, next Sunday, 4 o'clock p.m., here in this space, we're going to be having uh, our bell choirs and our vocal choir also going to be sharing uh, it's the music of the season, so that's going to take place next Sunday at 4 o'clock. And then I want to also highlight our Christmas Eve schedule. This year, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, and so we're going to have a morning service at 10 o'clock, and that will be in here. We'll have uh, a family service in the Family Life Center at 5 o'clock, and we'll have an 8 o'clock uh, service in this space as well. So 10, 5, and 8, and we encourage you to uh, let people know about uh, our worship service we've given you in the bulletin. We've tucked in a little uh, flyer that you can use and hand to somebody to maybe to invite them and come and worship with us on that Sunday. So I think having said all that, I'll turn it over to uh, Patty to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. It's good to be with you all this morning. <clears throat> Please rise as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Lord, you bring glad tidings to the poor. Let us hear. You heal the brokenhearted. You free the prisoners from their jails. Please come to us and send us out, forgiven to the poor, the brokenhearted, and the imprisoned.
There is a song of hope in our hearts today as we light the second candle of Advent and wait for the change that Christ, the light of the world, will bring into our lives. And so it is written in Luke chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. Let's now take this time to greet each other with the peace of Christ in whichever way is most comfortable for you. Good morning. How are you? Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, beginning with the the first verse. The Lord God's Spirit is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and liberation for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and a day of vindication for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for Zion's mourners, to give them a crown in place of ashes, oil of joy in place of mourning, a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. They will be called oaks of righteousness, planted by the Lord to glorify himself. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore formerly deserted places. They will renew ruined cities, places deserted in generations past. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, all that you've done to be here present, 
to lead us, to guide us, to, to gift us with the scriptures, and now to be at work in our hearts and minds as we think about what they mean for us today. We pray that these words might become your word to your people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what do you do when the joy of Christmas seems hard to find? When you hear, have yourself a merry little Christmas, and you say, no, I won't. What do you do? I will make the argument that every single one of us, at some point, will experience a year, a few years, a season of life, where these holidays will not be times of joy for us, for whatever reason. And I think it's important that we name that and that we normalize it, because that's real, something that nearly everyone at some point is going to experience when we're wrestling with loneliness, when we're wrestling with anxieties about or our finances or our family, when we're mourning the loss of relationships, when we're missing friendships, when we feel like somehow we've missed the boat on finding the meaning in life. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but I think that actually this underlying melancholy is built into the season. You know, when you take a song, even for example, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, does it actually sound like the vocalist is having themselves a Merry Little Christmas? You really think about it. It does not. No rendition that I've ever heard has ever made it sound like that. I just literally had this experience uh, this week talking with someone that I know, and um, it was just an innocuous question. How was your Thanksgiving? And the response was, it was hard. It was hard. My wife and I, we lost our child last year, and it doesn't quite feel right to be celebrating. So we all go through these seasons, and if you haven't yet, then you probably will, because that's what it means to be human. It means that sometimes even around the holidays, we hurt. And so I want to say that first, because whatever it is that you're experiencing right now, I want to tell you that you're not alone in it. One of the absolutely most diabolical things, the lies that our minds tell us, is that when we're going through something painful, that we're going through it by ourselves. That nobody else has felt the way that we feel, that nobody else can understand that everyone else is happy but me. When our minds begin to tell us those things, we need to recognize them for the lies that they are because they are, they are not true. And what they do is they serve to keep us kind of trapped inside ourselves. There is someone who understands. No matter what it is that you are dealing with, no matter what it is that you're experiencing. And not just someone, but the one who made you. That is the point. That is literally the point of this season. That God became human. As it says in John's Gospel, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's the reason for the season. We celebrate that fact. We gather together. We celebrate that God is here God is present, that Christ walks among us. So it's not true that no one understands. It's not true from the standpoint that no human understands. Because again, I think that this is something that all of us will face. And if we haven't faced it up to this point, we will. But it's also not true from the standpoint that God understands. Always. That's the reason why Christ stepped into this earth. And perhaps that's why 
when Jesus preaches his very first sermon, as the story is told in Luke chapter 4, that Jesus takes this particular passage from Isaiah as his text for his sermon. The Lord's Spirit is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the prisoners, to announce the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn, to exchange the ashes of sadness for a crown of joy, and to give the mantle of praise in place of a spirit of discouragement. It's a lot of promises. And in Isaiah's time, what this passage would have looked forward to was Israel returning from exile. So when the Babylonians overthrew Jerusalem, many of the nation's leaders were carried into exile in Babylon and stayed there for 70 years. And Isaiah comes from that period of time. And so this was a promise about returning home about finding joy again, about finding God's comfort and God's peace in the place where you're from, where you're expected to live out your life. And in Jesus' time, what this promise would have meant was the expectation that something new would arise, that Israel would no longer be subject to Rome's demands, but that instead a new way of being might emerge. That is the beautiful thing about the scriptures, is that the promises are not just meant for one time and one place and one people, but they are renewable. They continue to be relevant even today. The promise, the cycle of promise and fulfillment continues right up to now because we continue to long for God's peace and God's hope in our world, in our lives, in the church. And Isaiah presents this hope, both as a promise, but then also as a challenge. And so here's the promise. Again, listen. Good news for the poor. Healing for the brokenhearted, freedom for the prisoners, blessing for those who think that God has forgotten them. Do you think that God has forgotten you? Blessing for those who think that God has forgotten them. Comfort for those in mourning, joy in place of sadness, garments of praise instead of funeral clothes. And the promise is that when you're in one of those seasons, when you're hurting and you feel like you're alone, that God already has a plan to bring you through this season into something that's new. Good news. And freedom and blessing and comfort and joy. And that's the reason why in this season of the year we talk about all those things. Tidings of comfort and joy. Praise and not discouragement. You may be convinced that Christmas is not for you, at least not this year, that it's only for joyful people. But there is nothing that could be further from the truth, because Christmas is precisely for us when we are at our least joyful. I don't think that Jesus came into the world to bring more joy into the lives of people who already had plenty. Christ came into the world to bring God's joy into the lives of people who were experiencing none. He stepped into this world to remind us that however much our brain tells us that we are alone in what we're experiencing, that it is unique and no one can understand, that that's simply not true. And so the scripture today is a promise that God is present in every moment when we are hurting. But the scripture is also a challenge. It's a challenge to those who are able to enter into the joy of this season. So if you find yourself in that position where you are feeling like you want to sing all of the carols at the top of your lungs and you want to trim all the trees and you want to hang all the lights and you want to bake all the cookies and want to wrap all the presents, if that is your joy... This passage is a challenge to you. It's a challenge to you 
to find a way to share some of that joy with someone else. Now, not in a way that forces them into a position where either you be joyful or else, which is the way that we approach people sometimes. <clears throat> I'm joyful, so therefore, put a smile on your face too. Not in a way that forces people to feel something that they're not feeling. But rather in a way that helps people to know God's love and God's care for them in this moment. So I want you to consider this week. Who is it that's in your circle that's hurting? Who is that person? Who are those people? In your family? Who is it in your workplace? Who is it in your school? Who is it in your church? Who is it in your neighborhood? That you know is hurting. And then take some time to figure out how you might share this promise of joy with them. It can be very simple. Bake some cookies. Bring a meal. Send a card. Make a phone call. Stop in for a visit. Share a cup of tea. It doesn't need to be complicated. Because these moments of human connection are actually the thing that's at the heart of Christmas. Literally. Moments of human connection are literally at the heart of Christmas. You'd be surprised how much it means just showing up. How important that is. Because literally, that is what this whole holiday is based on. It's based on the idea that God just showed up. And here it is 2,000 years later, and we still celebrate it. The fact that God showed up. That's what the whole thing is about. So, let me wrap up. How do we keep Christmas real? Well, first of all, we allow ourselves to be honest about how we're really feeling. We all have seasons when Christmas is hard. So if we allow ourselves to be honest, if we allow the people around us to be honest, that goes a long way. These are the times when you lean into Christmas's promises. And then we also have this other side that is the challenge that when we are feeling the joy, those are the times when we lean into the scriptures, challenge to us to share that joy with someone else, to be the one through whom God's spirit works, to share comfort and joy and healing and encouragement. This is how we keep Christmas well. I'm done because I'm losing my voice. So, this is how we keep Christmas well. Amen.
You may be seated. And friends, as we uh, prepare to think about how God has blessed us, uh, this is the season of the church's year when we're kind of preparing for the year end, kind of looking at uh, where we think that we might end up and looking forward to uh, the next year and preparing our budget. So one of the challenges we have as we continue to kind of uh, taper down some of our expenses is we uh, had anticipated uh, receiving by the end of the year the employee retention credit, which is kind of a federal government program that was kind of a follow-on to the payroll protection plan. Well, that really uh, looks like it's probably not going to happen before the end of the year, and so that leaves us short in various ways, and particularly in uh, the ways that help us to make our gift to the United Methodist Church to continue the work that we do both here locally and across the globe of evangelism, of worship, of education, of uh, providing health care in rural areas uh, all over the world. The United Methodist Church is active in uh, more than 130 countries all across the globe. And so it's important for us. Um, we take seriously the challenge to be able to make these gifts um, so that that ministry can continue. And so we encourage you to help us uh, to make that happen here as we enter into the end of the year. Uh, we appreciate your gifts, and you can make a gift today by dropping something in the uh, offering plate. Also, by uh, making a gift at medfordumc.org slash give or through the app. So we thank you for your support.
please join me in our Advent prayer of dedication. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in hope. And we give in hope. Hope for your coming reign. Hope because of your presence with us even now. Receive these generous offerings. And use them for your work of healing and hope in our world. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we prepare to celebrate at the table this morning, I'll remind you that the table does not belong to the United Methodist Church, but it belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he's the one who issues the invitation. That invitation is to all people everywhere who seek to live in a new relationship with their God and with their neighbor through him. So all of you are welcome here. Those of you who are joining us online, we encourage you also to gather the folks who are in uh, the house with you um, so that you might take some time and celebrate together, gather some juice and some, uh, or some water, some bread or some crackers, and you're welcome to participate as well. So today uh, we have uh, the one-piece cups, and when we deliver them to you, we just invite you to hold on to them um, so that we might all eat and drink together. We also have gluten-free elements available. Should you need them, we'll send someone around, um, and you can just let us know that you need them. We'll continue now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us, it is right to, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I understand now why um, at the previous service people looked at me a little funny because I think I skipped that whole line. And it just occurred to me. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You have done great things for us, God. And so as we are gathered here this morning, we want to celebrate and offer to God our joys, our praises, our thanksgivings. Uh, what are some of the things that you want to celebrate today? Amen. 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 For healing. Amen. For family. Are there others? Amen. For our grandchildren. <laughs> Amen. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. Your own Son came among us as a servant. He came to be Emmanuel. He came to be God with us. And so we trust that whenever we gather in Jesus' name, that God is present here among us. And so we know that we come to the table this morning with concerns upon our hearts, people that we're concerned for, uh, situations that we're praying over. What are some of the names and some of the people and the situations that you would like to lift up today? Amen. 
Holy God, by the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, then he shared it with his disciples, and he said, Take it, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, then, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He shared the cup with his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Now, for those of you who are at home and joining in with us today, we invite you to uh, just hold your hands over those elements before you so that we might participate in this prayer together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of the bread and the cup, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite those who will be serving with us today to come forward at this time, including our Eucharistic ministry. I'll remind you, too, that if you're interested in receiving a visit from one of our Eucharistic ministers, or if you would like to become part of that team, please reach out to us and let us know that.
So for our friends in the room, we invite you to open your community cup now. And for those who are joining us at home, we encourage you to share uh, the bread or the cracker with your family and friends with these words, the body of Christ broken for you. And likewise, let us share the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, go forth in this place to embrace both the promise and the challenge of Christmas. The promise when things are difficult and when you can't find the joy, knowing that Christ has come to be present in everything that we face. And the challenge that when we are experiencing that joy, to go forth by the power of the Spirit to share that with someone else. Go forth to be the encouragement that the world needs. In Christ's name, amen. Three.